Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to introduce you to blend trees inside of Unity, where when you play a certain animation, it can automatically select the direction of the animation that you're trying to play. So if you have idle animations like this, you can idle in four directions by just telling the animator to play a blend tree, setting a couple parameters to get the direction, and then everything else is calculated for you. So, so it makes four directional movement like this very easy to handle. So for this tutorial, I'm going to start by jumping into my animator controller. You can see in this animator controller that we have a series of animations. So right now, player idle here is a singular animation with the motion player idle right and player walk is player walk right. So you can play animations like this where it has one set direction for each of the animations. But without a blend tree, you would then have to make connections in order to determine should it be playing walk right or walk up. So to simplify all of that, you would swap it out for a blend tree. Now for this animator controller, I'm not switching between these different animation states uh, using transitions between them. But rather, if I quickly show you a glimpse of my player controller, you can see that at the appropriate times when I decide the logic is correct for it, I just do animator.play on the animation name that I want to play. So this works both for animations with a singular direction or for blend trees, it would be exactly the same process. You just do animator.play and then you put in the name of the animation or the blend tree in here. And then at the appropriate times, it's going to switch to the animation you want to play. And having your logic for determining when it should walk or when it should idle and code just makes it look a lot nicer in here. So let me show how it looks right now with this animator controller. You can see that I can only walk or idle to the right. So let me go ahead and create a blend tree now. I'm going to right click on the animator graph and choose create state from new blend tree. So this blend tree, let's just rename it for the same name, player idle. Then I don't need to change the script at all. So I'm going to delete the animation player idle from the graph. I'm just going to paste the name into the blend tree. Let's make sure that player idle is still being the default state. OK, now I want to jump into the blend tree. So you double click on it and inside of here, you're going to see blend tree, but no animations to play yet. So we want to change the blend type to sim to 2D simple directional. If you're trying to blend between up, down, left, right, this is what you want. And then you're going to need two parameters to determine whether it should be moving up, moving left, moving to the right or moving down, at least in terms of the animation. So you'll see that on the parameters, I've already set up move X, move Y. So these are floats. You can add a float in here, and then you need to set these parameters inside of the script. So for the blend tree, it's going to look like this. Move X for horizontal, move Y for vertical. And now we click to add in for motions. So add a new motion field and do that four times. Then you need to select the motions which are just the animations that you're trying to play. So obviously, you're going to need to create one animation for each direction on your character, which means you need the sprites for it. If I click on my character, let's go ahead and open up the animation window really quickly. And if I shrink it so you can see everything, you can see the player walk animation. So this is just when you take the sprite property and you change the sprite on each frame. I assume you probably already know that. So you just need to do that for an animation for walk right, walk up, walk down and walk left. So once you have those, we're going to take those and put it into the motion fields for this blend tree. So you can see in the project, I have play walk down, left, right, and up. So I'm going to drag these into the respective slots. And then I need to set the closest value position for each of those. So how the blend tree works is that when you have these X, Y values in the move X, move Y, it's going to automatically select whichever animation is closest to the current values, and that's the one it's going to play. So for walking down, I would want to put in, I believe it's negative one for the Y to start. And then for position X, negative one for left, play a walk right, one on the X, and then walk up is going to be zero and then one. So if I expand this preview window and play around with the move X and move Y, you can see how this is going to change the animation depending on what these values are set to. Now, there is the case where you press two directions at the same time, which is going to give you basically an even value for both the X and Y halfway between, if you go right here, up and to the left. 
So you might want to make it so you can prioritize one animation over the other. So if you want to prioritize left and right animations over up and down, what you can do is you can move the position value for down and up to be 0.1 extra on top of the negative one and positive one. So if you make that position Y negative 1.1, player walk down and 1.1 for player walk up. What this is going to mean now is that uh, when the value is halfway between them, kind of like right around here, because this is actually having to be further away, since it's a negative 1.1, not a negative one, it's going to prioritize left and right animations when you press both of those keys down at the same time. So likewise, if you wanted to, you can make it prioritize up and down animations over left, right by making the left, right animations have the negative 1.1 and uh, 1.1 for the position X and stuff. Kind of up to you, but I find this setup works pretty well. So if you have these values, then your play walk blend tree is going to be set up here. So just make sure you have the two parameters, move X, move Y, set those over here for the parameters, 2D simple directional mode, and bring in your four states and set the proper values in here. So let's go up one level. And uh, you can see, of course, I made this uh, player idle blend tree, but I put all the player walk states in it. So I'm just going to rename this to be player walk. And then I'm going to take this one up here and call it player idle. It's still empty. So we'll make it the idle animations instead. And let's set the default to be player idle, not player walk. Oh, and watch out for the string names of your animations. When you are calling animator.play, the string has to perfectly match whatever is in your animator. So the blend tree has to have the same name as the string. So watch out for that. Okay, and this one actually hasn't been made into a blend tree. So let's delete the player idle really quick. And I'm going to right click create a new blend tree. And I'm going to rename that to be player idle. So let's set the default state to player idle. Now we can jump into this blend tree. And it's going to have exactly the same setup as the walk. It's just different animations. So blend type, set that to 2D directional, move X, move Y as your parameters. And you can technically name these whatever you want. Um, it just needs to be consistent between your script and the animator name for the parameter. And then let's add in four motion fields, just like before, find and create your idle animations. So player idle down, player idle left, player idle right, and player idle up, negative 1.1 for player idle down, position Y, negative one for player idle left on the position X, one for position X on player idle right, and then player idle up, zero X, and then 1.1 on position Y. So we have these blend trees set up and they actually have all of the animations for the directional input added to them. So the only thing we need to do now is that we make sure our player controller script sets these move X and move Y parameters. So the method I've been using is using the newer player input system, which you can get at window package manager, check the unity register in this dropdown, and then do import system. So in the unity project I'll have for download, that's just what you see on screen right now. I already have this set up, but uh, to use the player input like this, you do have to use the unity input system, which replaces the old basic unity input and it has a lot of extra features that uh, can make your life easier when it comes to uh, getting input from the player and converting that into actions that your game actually does so i'm not really going to go into that just if you're going to use this exact player script you do need that setup which is going to include a player input component and then uh, player actions and you can just use the default which it'll basically create automatically for you right here okay so jumping into the player controller script now just going to go over what's important here. So just to show, to set the parameters inside of the animator controller, you'll see that I have animator.setFloat, the name of the parameter. So that's the move X, move Y as a string, and the value we want to put in it, which in this case is the float. So the X, Y directional import that you get from the player. And if you don't already know to get the animator component so that you can call these functions on it, you need to declare the animator and then do get component animator, which will find the component on the game object, which is the animator right here, and reference it inside of the script for you. So the only question you really need to know here is where am I getting the move X, move Y input from? So when you're using the input system package, you can use void on move, 
which is going to receive the send message from the import system component, gives you an input value here. And then with that value, you just do get vector two. And that is going to be the left to right input from your player controls, uh, whether that's WASD up, down, left, right, or using a actual physical controller like an Xbox controller. So we get that. I store it in the move import. And at the proper times when I want to update that, so the animation changes in the controller, I just do the set float, the float I'm trying to change on the animator controller, and then the value I'm going to put in it. So pretty simple, and the script will also be for download on Patreon if you want it. And just to show where you're getting that actual import from on the player input in this player actions, you can double click on that, lower down move, and then you can see the different default movement types like WASD on the keyboard. So these values add the data into that 2D vector that you get with value.get vector2. So this one action supports multiple types of controllers out of the box just to show one of the cooler things about the import system. Okay, so now we should have the parameter setting in the animator controller. We have the blend trees set. So the blend trees are gonna handle picking the exact direction of the animation and our script just sets whether we're doing player idle, player walk, or one of these other blend trees. So now if we go into play mode, we'll be where I was showing at the beginning of the video, where we can move in four directions, idle in four directions, as you can see here. And you can just repeat the same steps for your other animations, have a blend tree for any four directional animation. So here I have something like an attack animation, and that is in four directions really quickly as well. So that's pretty much blend trees in a nutshell. If you're going to have a character that needs to move in multiple directions, especially with a top down style game, then I would definitely recommend using them so that you only need to call a few different animations on your animator. And the rest of your logic can just be managed by the blend tree deciding which animation to play based on your move X, move Y input. So that's going to be it for this video. If you want to get this demo, I'm going to have a link to my Patreon down below. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future video content.